hand up to everybody. Community leaders, community elders, respected guests, lords, ladies and gentlemen, James Chandler and welcome to Oshawa Centre. It's a huge privilege and honour for me and the Oshawa community to have present so many esteemed guests from community organisations, the clergy, lords, members of parliament, our mayor, and of course the councillors from Wellington Hatfield Council and <coughs> councillors from many of the areas where our community is represented. Thank you for joining us here today at Oshawa Centre at the start of our celebrations. These celebrations mark the 10th anniversary of the very first traditionally constructed Shikriban Jain Derasa in Europe. The term Shikriban refers to the ornate domes which are built tall to mean reaching the sky. I'd like to share with you a little background on our community. As Oshwas, we are largely followers of the Jain faith, the teachings of Lord Mahavir and the previous Tirthankas. Jains worldwide are estimated to number 5 billion. The Oshawa community itself is very small, numbering under 100,000 worldwide. Outside of India, the UK is where we have the largest community, with some 26,000 residing largely in Greater London and the South East. Our history, heritage and our journey can be traced back to a small place called Osia in Rajasthan, where the population adopted the Jain religion from Jain monks who were immediate followers of Lord Mahavira 2,600 years ago. Over the centuries, after several migrations, around 500 years ago, a small group settled as farmers in villages around Jamnago in northwest of present-day Gujarat. Today, most Oshwals can trace their history to these 52 villages in India. We have represented these 52 villages in the grounds of our temple, with trees planted to mark each village by name. Towards the end of the 19th century, due to constant droughts and hardship, our men folk started to venture out to seek livelihoods in newly opening Africa. Firstly to Madagascar, and then to East Africa. This was during the time of the British Empire. The brave souls that made this journey did so in the hope of a better life for them and their families. Excuse me, I didn't know. Uh, for their families. The earliest known record of Oshwals to land in Mombasa, East Africa, was in 1898. By 1900, there were around 200 young Oshwals working poor British, either as labourers or supplies of food and lodgings to the early immigrants. Quickly adapting to the new country, by the 1920s, many Oshwals had made the journey to and from India by Dows and later by ship steamships, married and brought over their extended families to East Africa. Hard work, frugal living, allowed these little things to gradually establish roots in these new frontiers. In fact, over the last 100 years, this community became nearly 30,000 strong at its peak. Successful in trading and as shopkeepers, many went on to become small-scale industrialists and with it made East Africa their home. Strong cultural beliefs and religious beliefs kept the communities together and this saw the construction of temples in Nairobi and Mombasa as well as smaller community organisations across East Africa. From the 1940s and 50s, Oshwals ventured to the UK, initially to study and then returning home to India or East Africa. It wasn't until the late 1950s that the first families permanently settled here in the UK. As our numbers grew, the need for social interaction saw an informal group of Oshkosh meeting for Diwali and important religious celebrations. 
By 1968, we had a strong community presence in London, and with that, we formalised the association which was to become Washoe Association of the UK. Those early steps in establishing our association make it an important and integral part of life for many Oshawa's in the UK here today. It helped to maintain our culture, heritage, ancestral history, both from India and East Africa. And it also became a forum for Oshawa's to come together in times of happiness, through celebrations, through births, marriages, as well as at times of sadness at the loss of loved ones. Our membership has grown significantly from those early days to the present day count of some 15,000 members of Oshawa Association in the UK, serving a community in the UK of approximately 26,000 Oshawans. As our organisation has grown, we've found two aspects of community life which have helped maintain and unite in a and uniting spirit, in, uniting spirit in times of monumental change. The first was acquiring the site, and the second, the construction of the Larissa. When we first acquired this site in 1980, it was simply a listed country home with stables, barns, and 80 acres of land. The visionary elders in our community, many of whom sadly are no longer with us, not only came together to acquire this site, they also negotiated with local authority to allow for the development of these halls that you see here and a permanent place of worship. The late Zerjan Lakamshi Harya was one such visionary who sketched the outline of the proposed derasa that we see here today. That template was to become the actual building. The 1980s were challenging times. Our community members were still laying down roots here in the UK, and the difficulties we faced were not were such that not only acquiring this site but developing this site were tremendous challenges. The perseverance of those great community leaders delivered us with these halls, which have recently been refurbished, and the dream of constructing the Jane Darrison. It was not until 1997, when Mr. Ashokbhai Mojin Shah and his executive committee were elected, that the work first started to lay the foundation stones for the Darasa that you see here today. After Ashokbhai's term ended, the project stalled, and it remained a dream that was still to be attained. In 2002, Mr. Ashokbhai Mojin Shah was elected president, and together with his executive committee, he pledged to restart the Delta project. In 2000, 2003, the project recommenced and supported by a very strong and dedicated uh, executive committee, the dream was realised. August 2005 saw the largest ever gathering of Oshwals in the UK to celebrate the Patista Matsu, which was the actual opening of the very first traditionally constructed Jain Temple the Derasa, or the temple, is unique in so many ways in that it was constructed on untainted land. It was built using traditional techniques dating back centuries. It was carved entirely in India before being shipped to the UK. And it was a collaboration of British engineers and architects together with Indian stonemasons. Many aspects of the build were a huge learning curve. Western building standards were put to test within the traditions and ancient methods of building that, on the face of it, made no sense. Yet, in reality, they were completely tried and tested over the centuries. The professional team, led by Mr. Mahesh Doshi of Civil Suite and Mr. Mark Herbert of Anson and Bailey, together with Rajesh Bhai Sundura, the Indian designer, were assisted by our team all the way to see the completion of this magnificent building. Ladies and gentlemen, all came together as you can see, and indeed it is a marvel of engineering as the building contains no steel. The construction of the Derasa <coughs> is truly a landmark moment in the history of our community 
not only has it brought our community, get, community together, it has also created a focal point for Jains throughout the world. Those who visit the centre of worship at the Darasa from all over the world. Jains are generally modest and unassuming people, so this beautiful building is not known to the wider British community. However, the Jain faith is very open to all, and over the years, we have welcomed thousands of visitors and dignitaries to Ashwa Centre to view our Darasa. These include the Archbishop of Canterbury, his eminence Cardinal Turan, and most recently his Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. The journey of our community has seen great steps in the last 30 years. Today, we have nine administrative areas with 24 trustees to oversee the day to day activities, which encompass education, welfare, health awareness, and cultural activities. We have four community centres. Oshawa Centre, this centre here, which is our main centre. South London Lajenwari in Croydon. Oshawa Shekha <coughs> Centre in Kingsbury. And Oshawa Shekha Centre in Hounslow. All centres funded by members' donations. Education has been a driver for our community. Looking back over a hundred years, we were simply farmers. And today, our community has professionals in virtually every area of the trade and industry. Ladies and gentlemen, I mentioned earlier that bold steps have been taken in achieving the dream of constructing this beautiful temple here at Washua Centre. Whilst there are many hands, and there were many hands, involved in the realisation of this dream, appreciation should go to the many hundreds of families who supported us so generously, not only to fund the construction, but also the moral support to make sure the dream became a reality. We can't name the individuals for their contribution, as there are still so many, and many sadly are no longer with us. However, there are two names that I would like to mention, because they perhaps played initial roles in the construction of the temple. They are Mr. Viha Chitendra Malde, who performed the first ceremony in laying the nine foundation Chilianas, or slabs, in 1997. I think he was a young man then, and he's somewhere in the audience here today. The second, in 2004, Mr. Dandilal Jeshan Karya, who laid the first foundation stone of the building that saw the start of the construction of the Delta. It takes a fundamental principle to make dreams a reality, and that is belief. The leadership shown by past executive committees in pursuing the dream must be acknowledged here today on the 10th anniversary of our Delta. I'd now like to invite a few people forward if I may. First, please can I invite Mr. Ashok Bai Morton Shah, who was elected president in 1996. With his executive committee, they started the Derasa project. I should buy it, please come to the stage.